Hey, what's going on guys? Jake Verden Tech here back with another video and today we are on the topic of 3D printing and more specifically we're going to talk about 3D printing filament and the filament I have had the absolute best luck with compared to all the other filaments that I've used. So first off before we jump into this video I want to give you guys a huge thanks for a thousand subscribers. It's really awesome to have hit this milestone and I always thought having 10 people wanting to watch my videos was pretty cool, so a thousand is just mind blowing. Really glad to see a lot of you guys are enjoying the videos that I'm putting out. Really appreciate all the positive feedback I've got from you guys, and I just can't thank you enough. So now jumping into the topic of 3D printing filament, this isn't so much a video going over the different types of filament, the pros and cons of them, but we are gonna touch on that a little bit first, but more so I wanna talk about brands and the ones I've had the best luck with because I was kind of taking it for granted for a while. I was using one particular brand of 3D printing filament, having great luck with it, phenomenal print quality, the whole nine not having any issues, and then just casually switching to another one and instantly having issues. So I definitely wanted to let you guys know what filament I've had the absolute best luck with, especially for those beginners out there that are very overwhelmed getting into 3D printing, thinking about getting into 3D printing, because there's a lot of obstacles in it and it definitely doesn't help when you have issues with filament that are is kind of out of your control. So quickly going over the different types of 3D printing filament, and I haven't used them all by any means. I've really only used two out of the four that I can think of offhand. So the ones that I've used is PLA, which is what I use for the most part and I've used a little bit of PETG. I haven't messed with ABS yet or TPU, but those are definitely other very popular types of filament. So PLA is probably the best recommended for people just getting started into 3D printing or people that have been printing for a while still go with PLA in many cases. PLA is great. It's pretty strong when you print it. It's the print quality is usually pretty good. You don't have to deal with as much stringiness as something like PETG or ABS. The only downside I can think to PLA is if you're trying to print something for an outdoor application where the elements mainly be in the sun because PLA does tend to warp and I don't think it's so much under heat but it is under the UV rays of the sun that can warp some prints. So that's where something like PETG or ABS can kind of come in as it doesn't have those issues. And just to give you guys an example of that, I have this prop gun I made, but you can see it's kind of warped. I accidentally left it in the sun and it might be kind of hard to tell from that side, but you can definitely see there is some warping going on. And I actually painted this one and when I left it out in the sun, it was started off as a cloudy day and of course the clouds kind of went away and the sun came back out and I wasn't monitoring the paint pretty that well so I forgot about it and it did end up warping so that's the one downside to PLA that I can think about but for the most part almost all of my prints are usually used for an indoor application and I just stick with PLA. PETG is another type of filament I've used a little bit of for a couple outdoor applications. And I've had okay luck with it. The only problems I've really ran into with PETG is when using it and then switching from that back to PLA is I've had issues with my nozzles getting clogged. So I was going through nozzles pretty regularly. And another issue with PETG is a lot of printers can't print with it right off the bat along with ABS. If you have a Bowden tube set up and you don't have a direct drive printer, a lot of times the stock Bowden tube is only rated for about 210C for PLA. And when you get up to PETG and ABS, you are going to have to print at a higher temperature. So you might have to upgrade your tubing depending on your printer. And I did on my Ender 3, I ended up going with a Capricorn tubing. So I was able to print with PETG and it did just fine. So now digging into why I wanted to make this video and that is talking about the brands of 3D printing filament and going more towards PLA because that's what I use the most. And the whole reason why I'm making this video is I had been doing a lot of printing lately and I've been using one particular brand and my prints have turned out great. I haven't had any issues with my printers and I have the original Ender 3 Pro and now the Ender 3 V2. 
They're both printing really well, doing lots of printing with PLA lately. And I had another color of filament I wanted to use that was from a different company. And tried it out, first print went okay, and then immediately the next print that I did right after, um, I ended up with a clogged nozzle. Did some troubleshooting on it, and my extruder was just skipping layers. There was a whole bunch of issues, and come to find out my nozzle was clogged, so the filament wasn't getting fed through the extruder. But long story short, I went from the filament that I'd been using for quite some time, had no issues, went to another filament that I had just opened, and immediately ran into issues. So I went from using the filament that I really love that has given me no issues, which is Sun Lu filament. And I've used a wide variety of colors. I've gone through quite a few of their spools and I haven't had a single issue with any of my prints. They haven't had any issues. They haven't given any issues to my printers. So I went from printing this box, which is for to hold Pokemon cards and top loaders as you can see, it turned out pretty nice. I was printing one of these. And this is about a 12 hour print. And I just wanted to try out a different color. So I switched over to this bronze from Emolin. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but I've had this spool for a while and it was still in the vacuum sealed packaging. Printed out just a small object for one of those boxes, just this sun and moon logo. And immediately after that print, I wanted to print one of those full boxes in this color. And it started off, it printed the raft. It looked okay. Some stuff looked a little bit funny with it. My extruder was making all sorts of clicking noises. So, and come to find out, it just wasn't feeding properly because the clog had already started. You know, I was immediately going from the previous print to the next print. So, which is kind of strange because I didn't think a clog could really happen like that where you go from one print to the next and you end up with a clog. But I guess it did with this filament. And I have had issues with other filaments such as the PETG in the past that has given me clogs before. But I haven't had that issue with PLA. So long story short, I swapped nozzles, went back to a Sunlu filament. This time I went with the gray color like you see on this box. And as you can see, this print turned out absolutely beautiful. Very smooth. The print lines are so faint on it. But I switched over to... I switched back to the Sun Lu Gray. Ran that 12-hour print and it printed absolutely fine. So, come to find out, it was that filament I was using. And it made me think that I have had issues with other filaments in the past. But Sun Lu has absolutely been incredible. I mean... The print quality is really good. I haven't had any issues with clogging. The adhesion's really good. So, and I just kind of took it for granted. I mean, I have ran lots and lots of prints with that filament. I've probably gone through about a dozen spools of Sunlu filament and I haven't had any issues with them. The only one I can speak for, which I can't really say it was an issue because the print was fine and I was able to use it all the way till the spool was empty, but I had one spool of white filament from them they got kind of brittle and whenever I would go to try and feed it into the printer, if I wasn't careful, it would snap really easily. It almost was like the filament got too dry, but once it got fed into the printer, the printer never broke it and the prints turned out fine. They're just as durable as any other prints I had. So I was definitely amazed with that, but that's the only issue I ran into. And like I said, it didn't hinder me from continuing to print with it. So going over all the pros that I can think of about Sunlu filaments and talking about the issues I've had with other filaments and just a little disclaimer, I am not sponsored or affiliated or paid to say positive things about Sunlu filament. It's just like I said, this is authentic what I've used and what I've had the best luck with. I will have some affiliate links below if you guys want to check out the filament for yourself and possibly purchase it. So starting off with some of the pros of Sunlu filaments, like I said, the print quality is absolutely top notch. You guys saw some of the prints that I just held up and I'm going to have all sorts of B-roll footage you guys can check out because I have lots of 3D printed objects in this space that have used Sunlu filament. And in fact, the stand that my phone is sitting on, this is actually the Sunlu blue, just the standard blue. But as you can see, that's a very nice print. 
And this is actually a holder for a Nintendo Switch. I do tend to use it for that and my phone. But the print quality is really good with that filament. The lines are very faint as far as the print lines go. It's got a very smooth, silky finish. Even if you don't go with one of their silk colors, if you go with one of their standard colors, it still has a very smooth texture to it. And overall, the finished product of the prints is just amazing with the filament. So another big pro with Sunlu filament that I found is consistency. Even on one spool, print after print, the results are consistent, but also if you switch colors, I've noticed the finish of the print is near the same, if not identical. And on these two deck boxes, we have four different colors of Sunlu filament. We obviously have the white and gray, which as you can see, the print lines are pretty much the same. And then going over to the designs, just extremely consistent results across the different colors that Sunlu has to offer. So that segues us into another pro, which is variety of colors. They have a lot of standard colors, like the gray and white that I had showed you. They have black and other pretty standard flat colors, but then they also have their silk colors, which also print very well, and they have a growing variety of those as well. And last but certainly not least is the overall reliability of Sunlu, which is what I've kind of taken for granted and what I really love the most about this filament. I haven't had any issues such as clog nozzles, adhesion problems, which I know can definitely be issues with your printer and the bed, working out the leveling and stuff like that. But filament does play a part in adhesion and Sunlu's always giving me pretty good adhesion overall. I haven't had any issues like on their end loops in the spools like I have with other filaments. I have had it to wear and many people that have been into 3D printing have also had issues like this is where you have a print going and the way the company spools their filament onto a spool and sometimes you can hit a loop in it and the printer will continue to print but Unfortunately, with the loop, there is no filament coming out because it's hit a snag. And I haven't had that issue with Sunlu. Now, going over the cons that I've had with other 3D printing filaments, and we've probably touched on about all of them, but digging into those a little bit more. The first one offhand I can think of is clogged nozzles, which is definitely a rough issue because it requires some 3D printer maintenance. You either have to try and unclog the nozzle or just go ahead and replace it, which is time consuming and it's time that you could spend running your printer and actually getting a print done. Another issue I've had with some other filaments, and like I mentioned, this is very subjective to the filament. The filament doesn't have a whole lot to do with it, but is adhesion. and. Running the Sunlu filament, I haven't had any issues with adhesion, but when I did switch to the Emolin bronze yesterday, I did notice that the one corner of the first layer was starting to curl up a little bit. And as soon as coming from the print that I did with Sunlu, I didn't have that issue. And going to the print after I used this, after it clogged my nozzle, I didn't have that issue either. So I think there was a little bit of an issue with the filament having adhesion problems because I didn't have that issue with other filament and I didn't re-level the bed or anything. So it does play a little bit of a part and like I mentioned that is a lot to do with the build surface itself. So I have found that the Sunlu tends to stick to the different build surfaces that I have pretty well. So another issue is loops in the spool and luckily I haven't ran into this a whole lot. I'm usually very careful about how I unload my printer and load my printer with the filament, making sure I don't have a bunch of slack on the spool. But I did have this issue with a uh, filament from Overture when I first got into 3D printing. I had a print going and about halfway through the print, it hit a loop and the printer just kept going and no filament was getting fed because it hit the snag of a loop. And that's unfortunate what that happens because in many cases it's not user error. A lot of times it's just an error in their manufacturing on how they spool the filament onto the plastic spool. So that was a little bit of a bummer and I haven't had this issue with the Sunlu filament which is great. But I have noticed that with other 3D printing filament brands in the past. So the last con we're going to talk about is the finished product of the prints. 
and issues I've had in the past with certain 3D printing filaments and how the prints have turned out with it and how they've not been so great. One of the more recent ones I can think of is a couple commercial projects that I had where I was making 3D printed drafting models for students at a school. And I was using some filament from Geetech, I believe it was. They're silver. And they're just pretty basic blocks that were assorted shapes. And on a couple of those prints, it was really weird. You would almost get like a thin spot in the layer where it was just like a, a big seam in your print. That it's almost like it just missed like a, a few layers. And then it gets thick again. It's hard to explain and I really wish I had one of those models on me. But... It was like a really weird brittle spot where it looks like it was missing a layer. So that's an issue I've had with a finished print from, and like I said, that was from a spool that I tried from Geetech. I had a friend of mine turn me on to it when it was on sale, so I figured I'd give it a shot. And most of the prints turned out pretty good with it, but I just had weird issues like that on a couple prints. So unfortunately for that project, and then the next one I did was 3D printed spark plug holders for a mechanic school for the company that I work for and I started out with the Geetech spool and same issue on just one or two of the first prints that I did they had that weird seam on a couple of the legs to the spark plug holders so luckily I used those also for prototyping but just odd issues so I ended up I switched to the gray Sunlu filament did about a hundred hours of printing with that and didn't have an issue so that is going to wrap up this video guys. Thank you for watching. Like I said, I really wanted to make this video to go over the filament that I've had the absolute best luck with and what I print with the most and what I'm probably going to continue to print with, that being the Sunlu PLA filament. And I really hope this video helped you guys out there who have maybe been using some filament lately and just haven't had great luck with it and haven't tried Sunlu. Maybe this will be a good video to turn you on to some of that stuff. Or if you're new to 3D printing, I definitely recommend this filament as it's the filament I've had the absolute best luck with and definitely the most consistent, really good results with. And there are many other filaments that I would like to try that I haven't yet. One of those filaments being Prusament from Joseph Prusa as that is a very well-known filament and Prusa in the printing world is huge as they make phenomenal 3D printers and the filament from what I've seen, the print quality looks outstanding with it. And it's definitely a filament that I would like to try. Hatchbox is another one I would like to try out as I've seen it pop up on Amazon quite a bit, but it just isn't a filament that I've tried, but it might be one I'll be trying in the near future. Thanks for watching this video guys. If you enjoyed it and found it helpful, make sure to drop a like on it. And if you wanna see more tech related videos like this one, be sure to subscribe. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.